Hello there everyone and welcome back to Equestria War. I'm your host, Mr. Revolutionary North Zebraca Lover, but we got to talk about Project Shooting Star. Despite a rough start, primitive rotorcraft have been pro proven possible and basic military applications are already being proposed, primarily for logistics and hospital services. One of the General Secretary's most hoped for outcomes, however, has failed to materialize. We intend to create air assault teams, helicopter drop paratroopers who can sweep over front line, land behind, and attack from the rear. It's impossible with current technologies and will likely be out of reach for some 20 years. The aircraft are too slow, too clumsy, too small, and too vulnerable for frontline operations. And even support duties are likely to be primarily non combatant for years to come. The theorized attack helicopter, while a very promising idea, is still quite far off, although not as distant as air assault teams. Therefore, with a heavy heart, we decided to relegate all helicopters and services to support duties for now. I could really use Wish right now. <laughs> Nice. That's actually really cool. Product Shatter. Heavy tanks are obviously the future of armored warfare, but current heavies simply aren't powerful enough and run into problems with their transmissions and engines. A true super heavy tank, not merely an upscale heavy, but a tank designed to kill them, provide a powerful frontline advantage over heavy tanks and comfortable superiority against anything lighter. To be properly useful, of course, it'll have to be amphibious as well. Cool. And, of course, we're still at war with these guys, but, uh, oh yeah, we also have... Synthetic crystals. Now we can convert the crystals, or rubber, into crystals. Um, do we need rubber? We actually do need a little bit of rubber, so that's why I've not done that one yet. Um, other than that, we're doing kind of okay. Casualty list. Uh, 2.15 million. We take out Makawiya. Makawiya. So, so overall not bad. Uh, we are suffering a little bit of attrition here, which is not good, because we don't have enough supplies for the entire front line. You know, go figure. Actually, why, why is that? I didn't increase the... Oh, because the port can't supply enough supplies. Um, throw one right there. That'll help. At least a little bit. I was trying to build up pretty much everything else. Let's see. F4. And then when you get to Hind, there's not a lot of supplies overall anywhere, really. Give it just a little bit more time, and then we'll be able to really good to go. Because we took out all those guys. And we've, we are now a nuclear naval power. It's very nice. Um, it's a little bit ahead of time for us. Probably not going to do that one yet. So it's a little bit ahead of time for us right there, too. So I'll start working on some more rubber, maybe. That'd be kind of nice. Yeah, we just definitely need uh, this stuff to all get done. It sucks we're using spe stuff for special projects, like for intelligence agency and whatnot. And we're still in war, war economy, too. So, got some homing torpedoes. Let them just burn themselves out against us, which is totally fine with us. Because we just want them all to die for now. So we can take them over. Actually, they're somewhat communist as well. Huh. I have a communist sentiment. And yet they still went to war against the, the, our you know, fellow brothers. Light tanks. Do these all get down to... No, they don't. Okay. Well, we can still use light tanks eventually, too. Ah, uh, naval stuff. Still working on this. Better sub detection, torpedo attack, whatnot. Oh my god. They really are suffering from a lot of attrition. <clears throat> Bureau against work teams are good. And why not? There you go. Post towards towards post scarcity. And we need to read about this one. Found new industrial bureaus. For the control of the economy must be embraced and high levels of organization affected to ensure effective planning. The people are of Hippogriffio must be well fed and well cared for and their labor not put to waste. Nice. Well, we don't have enough. Ooh, do we have another carrier there, maybe? Ooh. Four and three, and you have like none because you have two repairing right now. See, pony stage of protest. Man, come on. Oh, and can we core this last tile here? E no, darn it. I have enough compliance. The resistance, I think, is just, just slightly too high right now. So it's all right, though. It's all right. We'll get there. We will definitely get there. Ah, so we made the second port, which is good. But does that really help out too much? It doesn't help out that much. It helps alleviate some issues there, but yeah, just trying to get the. Uh, oh, so we got the rail line done as well, but we really need the support, the supply hub, I should say. Thirteenth, got a couple months left until that one. That's fine. It, it let them just continue just railing against us and whatnot. It just makes it easier for us. And we might have lost a couple marines here and there. Uh, yeah, yeah, my bad. Manpower's gonna down. Let's do that real quick. They keep sinking a lot of our convoys though. How? You know what? You're gonna switch to convoy protection. Come on. Actually, 
Should we, could we ever get their cipher done? Um, no, we're still working on it. This one was done though, that's pretty nice. Blue light tank. These tanks. Pretty heavy batteries, medium batteries. Stuff I should have researched before, but we didn't have five research slots at, at the time. Ah, the fourth vision. Posada gazed up at the stars through the telescope. It was unusually clear at night, letting her see the stars with exceptional clarity. The sky starts out because, uh, beside her. All wing around her. It's beautiful, isn't it? The former princess asked. It is, Posada agreed. Thank you for coming stargazing with me. It really means a lot. Thank you, Sky Star replied. I never knew there was such perfection. A long, quiet moment passed. Do you really think there's life out there? I do. There just has to be star people somewhere out there. We can't be alone. It's just not possible. Posada woke up hugging a pillow happily. Uh oh. Oh, now I guess if you want to do this one again, please go ahead. So we need to get that one done too. How do we do this last one then? Be at peace. Control all, all of North is Africa, so we gotta finish this war off first. This June, give us one more month, we'll have supply, and then we'll just do a bomb rush through. Because you guys have how much manpower left? Uh, a third of a million, and you guys have none. Well, that's good to see. Do naval stuff, good. The Forever Sun celebration. Nice. Keep working on it, keep working on it. Okay. More radar down here, too. It's not bad. I wish I would continue attacking, but I guess not. Some of their. They're not suffering as much attrition anymore. And we do have four nuclear reactors, which is pretty nice. Obviously, not enough. Civvy's 110. How many are we losing every month? Wow, 46%. That's really freaking high. Oh, God, God. Nice. Good stuff. Keep finding him, seeing him. That's why we threw on depth charges. Get some mediums. Nice. Ooh. Convoys are lost. Not ideal. But we'll throw another sub. Alright. Supper. Any from supply issues? Well, let's see what we can do here. Can we do anything here yet? I mean, we should have air superiority, in theory. A little bit. Just a little bit. As long as we win, that's what mat really matters. And they can't... They literally cannot reinforce their lines, so... Uh, 11 divisions there would be too much of attack. Uh, that wouldn't be bad, but we'll see. Methods of war. Nice. So that actually came up with even more planes. Wow. Oh, do we have even more focuses we could do? Oh. Oh, I never did the mountain awakes. We were asleep, but now we have awoken. The mountain is no longer silent, but it resonates with the sound of labor and preparation. Beware. All you would threaten us, we're ready for you, and we'll be at your own doing. Oh, I didn't know that. Battery, hippogriff technologies, sure. Sure. It's good. Sink him. We must have lost 120,000, that's quite a few. A little bit more service bar requirement. Yeah. <clears throat> well, as long as they don't get have enough manpower to do anything back against us, because they're already on service bar requirement too. And Russia is pushing pretty darn well down here too. I don't want to start attacking yet down there. Oh my god, that naval could be just shot up like crazy. Cool, we're fully done with the naval stuff. Why? Why do we get so much naval XP? Alright, start helping them out. Convoys. Another nuclear reactor. And going cord. Oh. Why are our ships not good enough? Alright, so you can actually be done with that. Just fill out the line. Oh, you know what? I forgot. We should have done this one too. So that should help a little bit.
I'm not worried about these guys. These guys seem a little weaker, even though they have more manpower. Um, it doesn't matter. Nice. Are those, like, divisions that have been defeated? Holy crap. Good call on Sheriff Terra, but we don't need them for this. Oh god. Supply issues are going to be a massive thing for us. Oh god. Should have thrown on logistics companies instead. It was a little ahead of time. What's that one instead? Product shatter. We run into a slight problem. Super heavy tanks create tremendous ground pressure, and in amphibious operations, we rarely have the st stable ground necessary for them to not stick into it. But that away from snorkels, fully sealed armor, and an amphibious engine, anything short of the solid facade of the ocean floor will be unable to support it, making it rather useless for amphibious assaults. Terrafin suggested we take the extensive data from the project and apply to the more traditional super heavy tank. Uh, as without all the extra weight and complexity, you could design a good tank, both somewhat in the project, and assist of the concept as possible. In particular, they pointed to the double tread idea, which performed well in models, but has not been rigorously tested and would take extensive re redesigning. Ba abandon the amphibious requirement. Believe in our scientists. I can do it. I like that one. That one's pretty cool. I don't need blueprints. Oh god, this is going to be so costly to do it like this. But once this army group is done, it, it'll be much better. Weapons of the future. After a dozen or so failed prototypes, Product Sal Salvo has finally borne fruit. The rifle that revolution will no longer fi uh, fire lead or steel slugs, but fend sub caliber darts made out of pure tungsten. The new rifle can be achieved incredible rates of fire. Pierce enchanted Griffonian armor, and even larger calibers even punch through light tank armor. Comrade Posado was sort of learned that it also had far greater range underwater than any conventional magical rifle, and has ordered the rollout of the newly named caramel pattern fletchlet rifles to all branches of our infantry. The cost of ammunition being made of tungsten and is pretty soon perhaps even depleted uranium would be prohibitive had we not already abolished money. A splendid design! Nice! Fletchlet rifles. Well, that's really cool. Success! <sighs> Light tanks, 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 tanks. More rubber! We'll get down there fast enough, but over here is a little bit more of a problem. It's just the supplies, my god. So when we get to there, we need to actually build this line from here to there. That's what we need. And now we have more civvies. Oh, because we did the mountain, mountain wakes. Yeah, political power game, weekly war support plus 2%. Dedicated tank engines. Okay, oh, thank god. I want you guys actually. I want to say stop. Oh, there's an open hole here too. God dang it. But at this point, just keep going for now because you're actually you actually have a little bit of supply up there now. Finally. Huh. Oh. Do we liberate them? Early lighting chances. Well, there we go. Universal Marine training. We go for that one too. Improve medi medium tanks. We don't want improved mediums. Light tanks, basic light tanks. Oh, we got so much army XP, we might as well do this too. Speed. Speed. Um, small armaments. Improved small cannon, advanced small cannon. One pony turret. I don't hear our speed. Advanced radio modules, reliability is always good to have. Um, armor. And then I guess. Auto loaders. Sure, there you go. 
I don't care about the cost, it doesn't really matter to me. Not too much, at least. M24 light pink chests. Nice. Bras. You are really bad at trying to find enemy convoys to sink. Because these guys that we just threw on, these. Uh, no. These guys. They should have, yeah, at least some sort of thing of depth charges. So you guys are coming back through here, but now that everyone's coming through this way, should be okay. So I'm gonna get the supply hub. We'll get there. It just takes a long booty time. A very long time. Oh! Follow the Quilla, huh? Come on, get up there to support. Project Tidal Wave. Planes flying low over the water reported to curious increasing their lift, a double ground effect. So we need to make possible larger planes slash boat hybrids capable of moving extremely fast and avoiding enemy radar by simply flying under it. Ideally, such planes slash boats would be able to hold missiles or torpedoes, therefore. These ground effect missiles or vehicles must be investigated as soon as possible. All right. Well, I guess we're gonna go there next. And we're maxed out on able XP. It was kind of a lot. Oh, basically, I think chests. Oh, wait. I guess we should probably get some better planes too. Huh, some of our carrier stuff is really outdated. Get a river though. We need more nuclear reactors. Just in case. No, oh, there's one over there. Whatever. My god. Taking out these guys is he just massive. My god. Osk Kranby. And they say gymnastic protest, aren't they? Fine, whatever. Well, we've lost about 150,000, which is actually a little better than I thought we would. They've lost 3 million. And the enemies in total have lost about 4 million. It's a little bloody of a war. Three-dimensional thinking, huh? What about this one? Ah, uh, we do have a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm, or at least quenched. Oh wow, this is taking a while. What's wrong with these people? Ten seventeen, January thirteenth. Oh god! Oh! Whoa! Well, that's actually pretty nice for us. Look at that. Vasily Patushenko. Grape leaves. Socialist Union, huh? They actually freaking did it. Holy crap. Don't you know, I did not definitely did nothing in the cons commands to make sure that would happen, or even set it up as a game rule. Holy good fathers. Heroes of the Storm War. Never to pro uh, promote, uh, improve public opinion towards the war for our propaganda ministers to select a considerable cinematic production. Heroes of the Storm War. A sublime viewing experience with a strong patriotic sentiment for screening across the country. We hope this heralds the beginning of a long and storied tradition for patriotic film industry. The results so far have been exciting. A masterpiece. Our naval theorist has suggested a specialized type of light cruiser built and tailored on torpedoes. With better work, we can design this new craft. Okay. Oh! Look at that. Nice. The nukes are flying. Okay, so how much more do we really need? My god. 
Hindia is so hard. Or so long to take out. Bakgal. Alright, so you're not connected to any sort of supply hub, which is a bad idea. Are you not connected? You're not even connected up here, too. What is wrong with these backwards peoples? Huh. Loon. Thanks. That takes a lot of supply for some reason. <laughs> That's right, we're all suffering here. Is it up here? Where's the new capital? Kanelepra. Hey, the second one's good though. Dehydrogenation. There we go. Almost done with industry too. Come on. Bruh. How much more do we really need? Jesus Christ. El Kota, huh? That's funny. Advance. Takes, oh, we got him. Thank God. Jesus Christ, it took so long. And they, like, probably just a few ships left. Alright, so that's good. Fine. Thank God. Jesus Christ. Took forever. A new capital, a surprising measures put forward to the Supreme Workers Council by Zumidian Comrade. As now in control of all North Africa, I propose that we formally recognize the fact by moving our capital to Ain Thratkoi. Its position near the coast will make a administration of both the continent and Eris easy, and moving will send a strong signal to those mainlanders who fear we seek to establish a hippogriff or racial hierarchy or above them. Or over them. Supreme Workers Council has a hearty debate on the topic, as some argue that the level of bureaucrats and party officials required to relocate will be too labor intensive. Others counter the party and the state need to take a strong stance against racism. It's a firm statement that reactionary conceptions of race have no plans in our nation, or no place in our nation. The RWP NCS threatened to boycott the Supreme Workers Council they have to conduct their business in that filthy zebra place, and suggests that if this body wants to send the message that we're abandoning our hippogriff civilization so badly, why don't we the capital new Ayachitli? I heard there's plenty of lunar comrades who simply love to meet us. After the debates are done, what position holds sway in the Supreme Workers Council? Govern the state. It's an NC, huh? Revolutionary fervor. <clears throat> nice. Alright, so let's get these guys out of there. And some place actually with supplies. Storm Kingdom. Mayor Egypt. Wait, Storm King. Oh, look at that. Nice. Multi layered combat's good. I visited Makawia. As revolutionary North Zebra grew to encompass the entire region. General Secretary Posada. Uh, made an effort to visit each newly liberated territory. Her travels took her from Tobok to Kizilzeb and everywhere in between. Now she was finally visiting the last destination on her list, the islands that once comprised the nation of Makawia. What she found there wasn't, wasn't encouraging. The Makawians were a proud and independent people with their own unique language and culture. They were not exactly thrilled about being absorbed in the North Zebrican superstate. And cities and towns still strewn with rubble, harpies of all ages glared at Posada and her military escort. Garrison commanders reported staff for resistance from the population and begged for reinforcements. Yet there were still bright spots. Makawi had its own native socialist parties before the liberation, and many of their members had agreed to join the RWP. On the last day of her visit, Posada addressed these new party members at a special conference. It was a nice change of pace to meet harpy com comrades who had rejected national chauvinism. <coughs> Posada gave a uh, short speech praising the socialist harpies and thanking them for embracing their new status as the North Africans. Her remarks were all received, and after a round of applause, many harpies rose to shake Posada's claw. One harpy in particular, who seemed especially eager to meet the general secretary, reached into his coat as he approached. Posada well, barely attempted to register what was happening as he took out a pistol and opened fire. Medic, we need a medic. Oh god. What? What? No. What the heck? Um, this actually is a little crystal and rubber, huh? 
I need more nuclear reactors. And we could use more basic armor cars. Oh, that's cool. The question of regional autonomy. Basada lay bed and recovering. The bullet only grazed her shoulder, but the assassination attempt weighed heavily on her conscience. It, if this would be assassin had been a cryptic reactionary, that would have been one thing, but by all accounts, he wasn't. According to those who knew him, the Harpy had been a devoted socialist all his life. Posada read through the manifesto he had written again. All of our socialist parties are banned, ordered to merge with the RWP, or be labeled as reactionaries. We've never met an RWP member except at gunpoint. Reactionary means enemies of the hippogriffs. Revolutionary means those uh, who praise them for destroying our republic. If that is so, then I'm an arch-reactionary. A race of society is one where hippogriffs and zebras patrol harpy streets, heavily armed, disdaining property, and shutting down counter-revolutionary printing premises, completely convinced of their own righteousness. Any who want these thugs gone are racist. Those few collaborators who storm the presses with them are anti-racist. If that is so, then I am an arch-racist. If a socialist felt this way, then Posada had clearly failed the people of Macawia. Now she had to find a way to make things right. In her writings, Rosie at Luxembourg always warned against autonomy for minority nationalities, saying nationalism is an inherently reactionary force. If autonomy was off the table, the best way to win the Harpies over would probably be ordering personnel in the country to be integrate, integrated into local culture. Yet Posada couldn't shake the feeling that, in this case, Rosie was wrong. McCoggins had made the feelings crystal clear, and granting them an autonomous republic would be the best way of showing that she was willing to listen. No autonomy, but we should integrate with uh, local socialists. They deserve a little autonomy. Uh, we show a little mercy. I wish I wasn't. I, I like. The, I love the color, Eugenia Macabre, but it's it's a little hard to see their colors versus our colors. Military training. Oh, I guess we don't. Why would I, why would I click on that? There you go. Oh, man. Praise and denounce communist regimes worldwide. Friend of Stalingrad. They support us. Oh my god. Even more focus is nice. Create our own faction. Eleven turn. I hope I'm doing all the right stuff here. Um, I guess thermonuclear aims. Nuclear weapons are viable at the tactical and strategic level, but as they have proliferated, the shock value has decreased. To truly project our power on a planetary level, we need something more. Our scientists have hypothesized that a fusion weapon, a mashing tritium, tritium and deuterium together would be incredibly more powerful than the first nuclear weapons. Good God. As normal, the devs have gone all out. And I love it. Do we need more crystals? Uh, we're at 55. We can do it at least one more time. A post-terrestrial manifesto. Our future, our future of revolutionary communism, is not chained to this world. Gravity's bonds can be broken. Sufficiently advanced rocketry will let us achieve spaceflight, and from there we'll be able to reach out to the life spreading throughout the galaxy and join our fellow creatures in interstellar communism with the true gift of giving. But so I can imagine a more perfect scene. The sort of saft sand of the beach cradled her back gently, uh, uh, comfortably. The air was cool, but the warmth coming off the water made it just feel just right. The night sky was crystal clear, providing a dazzling view of the distant stars, and for the first time in a long time, she had someone to share with. See that constellation? It's a dog. Really, Sky starts to ask, ask excitedly. Yep, see, there's a head and there's a tail. Oh, Sky starts to scratch her head. It looks kind of like a bird of me. Besides a giggle, I can see that, sort of. I don't really, it doesn't really matter. The stars are beautiful either way. They sure are, Sky Star replied, uh, smiling. I'm glad I got experience with you. Besides, I turned to look at Sky Star, but I was surprised to find the former princess already looking at her. I want to thank you, Sky Star began, struggling to find the right words. Thank me? <coughs> Excuse me. Thank, yes. You've been an amazing leader and always standing strong and staying true to your ideals. She paused again, and you've been a great friend, too. Sada blushed furiously. Uh, thanks, she stammered. Yeah, that really means a lot. I made something for you, Sky Star continued, holding up a shell necklace. Sada's eyes widened as she admired the shells, which shimmered in the dim light. Do you like it? Yeah, it's beautiful. Sada felt her heart skip a beat. Thank you so much. I'll treasure it for the rest of my life. Hopefully, Sky Star doesn't die soon. Let's hope. Let's hope now. Hey, right, torpedo cruiser, nice. Just chucking nothing but torpedoes. Well, the torpedoes aren't very good. I don't know if we'll actually use it, but, you know, whatever. Oh god, yeah, we have these other ships too. Um, we'll take the 18 subs and strip them, because we like stripping on this channel. And... There we go. There we 
you go. Shove them there, shove them there. Yeah. Are they made battle tanks? Cool. Oh, nope, 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 nope. You go there instead. There you go. You actually have one carry, which is not bad. Eh, that's not bad overall. It's not fantastic, but it's not bad. Uh, there you go. What do you have on you? 60. There you go. Do something slightly different. The loon. Matador. Where are we at now? 54 versus 158. Keep going. Alright. Well, the fall of Vetter. Wetter. Well, like I'm wet. Oh, wow. God dang. Stalingrad is on a rampage. Cut of the atom. Ooh. Reason above all. Power of the sun. Every single nuclear reactor we control is still a beneficial modifier, as we, as well as any we construct in the future. The power of the sun. Reactors are improving swiftly, and for the first time, we may have civilian application. Massive generators capable of powering an entire city through steam are the future of the energy, and someday we'll develop true fusion reactors. Upon that day, the sun shall bathe itself. The sun itself shall be caged in a prison of rods and water. Ooh. Say it so. Where's this one? I could have used that one earlier. Ship repair speed. Wait, wait, what? Ship repair speed plus 50%. I should have done this one way earlier. Oh, my bad. My bad. Um, yeah, I saw that one over there. Um, early main battle tanks. They're not bad. I mean, I guess we can make them. The reason I took so long to make these tanks is because, uh, well, we're not really a tank nation. But now, since it's late game, why not? Super heavy armaments. Super heavy howitzers. Or we go, like, advanced medium. I think we'll go advanced mediums. Um, radio. I like more reliability. Auto loaders are, not, are actually quite nice. Slip armor, even more armor. And. Stabilizers. Good enough for me. You can do that. You can do it like this. You say five. We don't. There you go. I did say we should probably focus on some more plane stuff. The Interstellar Manifesto. Life can exist on other planets, in the solar, uh, other solar systems, and other galaxies and universities. U universes. The fact that so many races appeared here, each with their own created gods, is all but proof of this. To imagine we are, we're, we are alone in a cosmos full of galaxies is a height of absurd pride. No, we know they're their comrades out there, and we know that they are comrades for capitalism, and it is inherently unsustainable. Capitalism will eventually collapse due to its contradictions. The only form of civilization that could endure to fly to the stars is communism, of course. We fight not merely for the revolution here, but for all of our comrades in the stars above. As to this I swear, revolutionary communism shall not falter. For our star people, comrades are out there waiting for us. We salute the vanguard that sends outside history. The interstellar cause... Better division recovery rate, a little bit. Better surrender limit, daily communist support, and acceptance of communist diplomacy. Nice. Bow of the sun. War plan plutonium. It's inevitable that the great powers of the world will turn their hungry eyes towards a revolutionary state. But when that day comes, we must be ready. Ooh. Tritium amassment. In order to construct such a weapon, we need plentiful uh, fuel. Fusion weapons will require an entirely different fuel than fission, and we're essentially starting from scratch. We'll begin purchasing lithium-6 and bombarding it with neurons to create our own tritium. Tritium, yeah. The Mount Eris Radar Array. Finding the Foo Fighters. Huh. Oh, wow. Nine. To properly start gaze, will require a gigantic radio telescope atop Mount Eris. We'll look at the stars and see if we can find anyone else looking back at us. As a side effect, such a radar system will likely aid detaching or detecting any hostile planes. A message to the stars, to the star people. We come to you as friends. We have long looked up to the stars with wonder and astonishment. If you are out there, please come visit us. We would love to meet you. That's cool. We're not building up nuclear reactors. 
Every state needs a nuclear reactor. Nice, nice. And I keep building up some civvies because, uh, well, we need more. More industry, more everything. Okay, do it again. 161, that just went up. That actually went down because we're building more nuclear reactors. Power of the sun. Nice. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't want to do that one yet. I'll do the war plan uranium. Or uh, plutonium first. Nice. So, how are we doing? Doing alright? Take a lot of casualties? Yeah? Pretty normal? Oh, the question of unification. Oh, that's really cool. A more attack organization. Ah, oh, middle of that. Yeah, pretty good. Cost for construction speed, don't really need that, but whatever. Looking good. Suicide pills, yummy, yummy. Um, I don't know if we're ever going to fight these guys, but if we do. We might need some uh, radar down here and whatnot too. Oh god, can you imagine trying to like build a structure all along here? Oh Jesus. Early random access memory. Ooh, 540, 50, 50 days. Get more Christmas to do that way. Casualties from nuclear strikes plus 10%. Okay. Now we're good. We're good. I don't want you. I really don't want you. War plan to plutonium. Oh, comrades, the matter is clear. A hard line to clear. His voice nasal and dry. The Yetis have already stormed across Zebrica once. We cannot wait for their smith casters to break their chains, but we must come to their aid. I propose an immediate invasion of the Stormlands to bring revolutionary communism to them. You're talking about invading across the world, Sky Star countered. Fire in her voice. For what? Revenge? To make the Yeti leaders suffer the way they made Zebrica suffer? You should be better than this, comrade. Isn't revenge a reactionary impulse? I don't normally say this, but Hardline has a point. Posada admitted. Sky Star world towards your disbelief on her face. You can't be serious, Posada. This is crazy. It'll wipe out a generation of soldiers, and why? Storm King is dead, and you really think they'll try the same stupid thing again? I do, Posada said firmly. I'm quite certain of this fact. You have to understand that ideology of conquest and acquisition has been heavily injected into their culture. Oh, well, if you know them so well, then start a propaganda department, Sky Star insisted. Help them and see the flaws of the system. Don't go on some silly crusade halfway around the world. Nonsense, declared Crack Lightning. Idealistic nonsense. I consider this the finest idea we've had since the revolution. The Yetis are at a biological level of sentience, which precludes the achievement of any mode of economic existence beyond primitive accumulation. Any independent Yeti state is a threat to us. Posada wins that Karak's approval, but her scar is starting to itch again. Even Hardline looked uncomfortable with this now. Sky started to crack into disbelief. Maybe she has let her personal feelings corrupt her thoughts. Maybe her treatment had left her scarred in more ways than one, but one thing was certain. She couldn't condemn others to die for her pain. Very well, Comrade Skystar, you have a good point. This is ill-advised. But maybe in the future we can do something similar. Maybe. So then what do we have here? Unconventional nuclear applications. Oh. Intensified depleted uranium collection. The blue star of the equator. Oh god. Replace export focus with communist counter economics. Oh, do not go to war with anyone else? I mean, that's fine with us, but still. I kind of want to go to war with more people too now. Uh, there you go. Well, let's get one nuclear reactor being made right now, too. Next stick. A little ahead of time. And jet engines. So we want our like, tank chassis. Welded armor. Stabilizer, sure, this time. And. Sure, screw it, why not? Oh, that, the one down here. Semi modern, nice. Up there, it's fine. Good. Half submerged readouts. 
Um, and conventional nuclear applications will do this one because it's probably going to take some time to actually do all this stuff too. <clears throat> nuclear landmines, depth, nuclear depth charges, nuclear air to air missiles, and more. There's so many ways to integrate nuclear power into the modern battlefield. We need to investigate all of them as our troops will need every edge they can get. 100%. And then, actually, let's go on a hub. A hub. Uh, upgrade our planes and whatnot. So, you're done, you're done, you're done. You're pretty much all done. Okay, so small air aircraft frames, rocket, oh, rocket engines. The range is, god, I hate rocket engines because they're just so tiny. Electronics. It's a lot of stuff for strap bombing. There you go. Um, small planes, small advanced frames. I'm sure there's a way, easier way for me to do all this, but you know, whatever. One lock's good. Uh, not that one. And. There you go, Cass. Because we can. And then. Now cast fighters. Oopsie. And last one will be naval bombers. Oh, uh, we can grab floats. But it's hurt their speed. There we go. That's all I gotta do. That's one, two. Making some more radar stations down here, which is fine. Uh, actually, you might want to build up an air base or right there, too. And just say hypothetically, if we were to go to war with these guys. You know, hypothetically speaking. Is that the most merciful thing? Probably not. It might screw us up, but eh, hopefully it doesn't. Message to the scars. Stars, not scars. <laughs> A message to the scars. Triple planes, oh well, we just made the next level. Stuff, whatever. Um, what am I thinking? Thinking, thinking, thinking. How do we do it for crystals? Okay, two, three, four. We need more chromium. Hard disclosure. <clears throat> Posada taps the microphone installed in their take inner tank eagerly. All the information had been collected and the great news was ready to be shared with the revolutionary state. The president told a major proclamation was to be made soon, but not more than that. Greetings, people of Revolutionary North Zebraco. A monitor announced the unidentified flying objects, or flying saucers, a phenomenon once considered fringe, are now officially recognized by the state and party. These things are real. Uh, they are here, and they've been here for quite some time. She took a bite of kelp. And now every file we have on these, as well as all reports we've collected from foreign newspapers, is publicly available uh, at the Hall of Records. These things have been spotted by pilots and astronomers, police officers, and politicians. They've been confirmed on radar, but from multiple stations, similar sightings of flying wheels of fire date back thousands of years. She took a deep breath. I wish I could say these things were the spice, uh, space comrades we've been awaiting. Unfortunately, we simply don't know. They may be spirits taking physical form, lay lines twisted in knots, time travelers, experimental craft tested by another nation, something else yet, or multiple of the above. Of course, there may also be extraterrestrial comrades coming to visit. If they are, however, they've not yet revealed themselves to us. If you have ever seen one of these things, be it a disc-shaped craft, a light in the sky, or in another form, please report it. We're very interested in learning about the truth of these unknown craft. Remember, comrades, the truth is out there. Yay! More daily comms support, even though we basically get none. Yeah! Ooh. Uh, restart the travel industry. Well, we might go to war soon, too. Foreign policy? For good. Subjects? Put them down. Yeah, oh, we've been angered by these guys. Yeah, that's right. We've been definitely angered by these guys. Supercharged. Nice. Because you can. Radiation proof armor. With increasing com commonality of nuclear devices on the battlefield, our force will need to be properly protected. This in turn requires that we develop thick lead armor for our mechanized tank units and reshape the tank design to allow the blast wave to fall around it. While this will be difficult and complicated, the rewards will make it worth it. Cult of the Atom. Um, you know what? Let me know. Should we do Cult of the Atom? Or should we do 
Reason above all. I'll do either one. Just let me know in the comments below. Cold of the Atom or Reason above all. Let me know in the comments. Investigating that esoteric. Even as science conquers the world, there's so much more we could we don't understand. The past aspects of magic still remain in the purview of individual sorcerers instead of being widely replicated, replicable. replicable. Another a questions, such as if we are alone in the universe, have yet to be answered. Let's open our minds and our aim our telescope at the unknown. Ocean proof gear, nice. Jet engines are very good too. More entrenchment, yes. And anything down here yet? No, good. Hello. Oh! Because we got that, we can do either one of these two. Cluster bombing, strategic bombing. Uh, we're not using TAC bombers, so it seems like a, kind of a waste for this one. More range is nice. I can do that one anyways, too. Oh, yeah. Modern strike bombing. More ground attack or tactical bombers? Well, we don't use those. Forward air controllers? Yeah. Aerial wave? Oh, heck yeah. Combined support? You betcha. Message to the stars. All oh, right. <clears throat> Project Tidal Wave. Project Bottom Feeder. Our current depth charges are as effective are effective, but due to their limited blast radius, they often fail to disable the targets. Particularly, if the submarine detects a charge and charges depth uh, changes depth before it goes off. The exotic we weapon recommission is to come up with a solution to the problem, which are, some are calling overkill. Arming your depth charges with low yield nuclear bombs to kill every submarine in the area, regardless of t changing depth. Nice. But better already. Alright, so I was looking over here. Could probably do that too if we really wanted to. Um, we're good. You guys are forty count with two. Because I actually would like to change this up now. Um, to main, main battle tanks, yeah. Vastly more armor. And... So let's just throw that on there too, because it's number soft attack. I still want armor recon, though. We need to get some mechanized units next. Anything else here doesn't really matter too much. No, go, go away. Operation Barnacle. Or to the star people first. We come to his friends. We've long looked up at the stars with wonder and astonishment. If you're out there, please come visit us. Star people, we have brought about the revolution here in Hippogriffia and spread it to all the north of Zebrica. <clears throat> We're ready to face the terrors of imperialism and the heartless calculus of capitalism. We know that you must have defeated capitalism or something quite like it yourself. Star people, we desire peaceful cooperation and cultural exchange. We desire to meet you, to understand you, to tell you about ourselves, and so to ultimately forge a brighter future together in a workers' federation of planets. Star people, the people of revolutionary North Zebra look towards you with admiration and hope. We know that you may fear us, but uh, as we are not yet a united planetary government, but do not be afraid. Star beckons us uh, as surely as they do to you, and we know that capitalism, imperialism, reaction, and all other forces in the way of the revolutionary communism will ultimately fall. We welcome any aid you can offer us in the struggle for communism. Star people, we would love to meet you. Sky Star set down the microphone, so how'd I do, Posada? You do wonderful. You do things, Star people have shells? I hope they do. I'm sure some of them. Hold on, it's re still recording. Oh, darn. Do we still have to do it record it again? <laughs> Actually, let's leave it like this. That's funny. Humorous. Supply is going to be an issue. We're doing this to save themselves from the capitalists. That's right. Operation Barnacle. While well, may seem to see any nearly nuclear weapons floating in the ocean, Bat is at a single naval mine, if equipped with a nuclear payload, can sink entire flotillas of enemy vessels, and can effectively deny a much larger area to the enemy, since enemy vessels, those far away from the blast, could be damaged or sunk, so. Um, where is a supply base? I'm going to assume it's right here. Come on, take it. I want to see if we can take this one. There you go. Oh, they spread it through there. They always, they always like spread it through that way. Talonsval Republic. Oh my god. General Strong. Harting. Oh, it's currently war. I don't want to uh, bother them while they're still at war. Unstable algorithms. Nice. In combat shelling. Nice. Mortar defense and breakthroughs. Very good, actually. Uh, probably continue with infantry stuff, maybe. Still out of chromium, but whatever. 
Can we upgrade these guys? Darn it. Just more soft attack. We like it soft. The Department of Extra Normal Affairs. Thank you all for attending the opening meeting of the Department of Extra Normal Affairs. Besides, I began. I knew the promise, our premise to put forth is eccentric. Eccentric, reported Cotto. That's putting it mildly. You're talking about UFOs, psionic and mind control, ancient civilizations with advanced magic and technology, alien species bioengineering our planet for Anne's sake. <clears throat> yes, I am, Posada affirmed. Confidence is growing in her voice, and this exact reaction is why such avenues of truth have been largely unexplored. There's so much out there, so much more to what we call life than any creature can imagine. And you know this how from visions, messages from the gods? No, Posada answered curtly. That may be what sent me down this path, but the reason I stayed on it was because my irrational thought has come to the conclusion that there really is something to all this. Look at the evidence for UFOs. Look at the evidence for advanced technology used to build the pyramids of the Meergypt. Look at the evidence for a rare psionic talent. Look at the evidence for a life seeding. Consider all of it taken together as one. What evidence? The reporter demanded. The visions in your head? Posada uh, bemused. Smiled amusedly. That's why we're here. To finally share the evidence for all to see. I'll start by letting the esteemed Dr. Blue Beam discuss flying saucers to the workers of the galaxy. The professor flew up to the stage with a grin. Alright, let's begin with the phenomenon of Foo Fighters, observed by our very own fire pilots. Let's hope this isn't a gigantic waste of time and money. Uh, ooh, breaking gravity's chains. It's not enough to know that there's life out there. We must begin a space program to be ready to visit our friends among the stars. As a first step, we should begin by seeing if uh, we can place an object in orbit around this world. While this project's completion is years off, rockets capable of reaching space have already been created. Let us step boldly into the beautiful blackness. Uh, we can use more stability, why not? <clears throat> Internationalism without limits. All around the world, workers live under the cruel rule of their overlords. While we may not agree with all of our comrades internationally, and when it's them or an evil vastly worse... Oh, my bad. Took out the camels. Uh, now, there's no choice. Even a harmonist may prove allies against the terrors of supremacy. Let all in the world hear uh, us and rejoice our trouble. Fighting the Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters, strange lights flickering around fighters have been reported by many pods when flying at night. We must uncover the true nature of these strange entities, and if they are of this world, or uh, another altogether... Well, you never know, but I think we might end it there for today, because we still have another episode, and uh, we might end up taking out <clears throat> more nations just because we can, and just spread communism worldwide. So, if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see what else we can do with the revolutionary North Africa. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.